This video will go over how to complete the Aspirin Level 1 Virtual Lab Experiment. This is not really an answer key, but a tutorial in case you get stuck during this virtual lab. The first thing you want to do is go to this website. The link to the website will be in the description of this video. Do not complete this virtual lab using the Firefox browser because there are glitches. Use instead Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. After you open the link, you should be seeing this page. Before you begin the virtual experiment, you first have to set up an account. This is really quick. So first, click this purple box with the word aspirin on it. Next, you want to click this register button. You have two options. Click the first one. Now write your name in this box. Please write your first and last name and then click register. This is the user's number. Write this number down and save it. In case your browser crashes or you want to complete the virtual lab at a later time, you can use this number to log back in and save your progress. Now click this link to return to the screen experiment. Before we begin, let me show you how to log back in. Let me first log out. To log back in, click the login button on the top right corner of the page. Then enter your user number and click log in. Then click the aspirin purple button. Now we're back at the screen experiment page. For this assignment, we will be doing aspirin level 1. Click the start this level button to begin. Before we start this virtual lab, let me first show you how to check what stage you're on in level 1, how many points you collected, and how to download the lab PDF. If you scroll down a little using a mouse, you can check what stage you're on in level 1. There are 11 stages in level 1, and we're currently in stage 1. On the right is the total points you have collected, and on the left, is the total points available in each stage. In the middle on the bottom of the screen is the lab book. Click the button. This lab book will record everything you have done in this virtual lab and summarize it for you. Once you completed this virtual lab, click download to download a PDF of this lab book. This PDF is what you'll be uploading onto Google Classroom. If you wish to restart the level or the lab, click Restart. If you wish to close the lab book, click the X button on top. Now we can begin the virtual lab. Take a moment to read this text box. This lab is about synthesizing aspirin. Once you read this text box, click Next. At the start of this level, you'll first watch a short video about aspirin. The video will be about the history of aspirin and how aspirin can be synthesized. Pay attention to the video because there will be questions about the video afterwards. Once you're ready, click next to watch the video about aspirin. To watch the video, click play. Pay attention to the video because there will be questions about the video in the next stage. Nearly all of us have used aspirin at some time in our lives, but not many people know that for hundreds of years, a related compound from willow bark was used to relieve pain and treat fevers. In 1899, a German chemist named Felix Hoffmann, who worked for a German company called Bayer, experimented with aspirin and gave it to his father, who was suffering from the pain of arthritis. With good results, he then convinced Bayer to market the new wonder drug. Aspirin was patented on February the 27th, 1900. In 1915, during World War I, the British wanted aspirin to help relieve pain for their soldiers on the front line, and so the British government offered a substantial reward to anyone who could help develop a manufacturing process. A Melbourne-based pharmacist did just that. Approximately 35,000 metric tonnes are now produced and consumed annually. That's 100 billion tablets every year. They're used not only as a painkiller, but also to treat fever, inflammation, rheumatism and heart disease. Aspirin contains a carboxylic acid group, an ester group, and a phenyl group. 
Aspirin is created using a compound called 2-hydroxybenzoic acid by esterification with ethanoic anhydride under acid-catalyzed conditions. The chemical name for aspirin is 2-ethanoyl-oxybenzene carboxylic acid. In this activity, you'll learn how to synthesize aspirin. You'll get to set up and run your own experiment and work out how much aspirin you produced. You can watch the video as many times as you want. Once you're ready, click Next. If you look at the bottom of the page, you receive 100 points for watching the video. You can click Review Lab Book to check what you have done. Once you're ready, click Next Activity. The activity will be a comprehension check based off the video. This is a fill in the blank activity based off the video. There are five questions. If you get a question wrong, you will not get the full 100 points from this activity. If you forgot about the information from the video, you can watch the video again in your lab book. Click the lab book, go under video, and you can play the video again. If you do not get 100 points from this activity, you can start the lab over again. Once you complete this, click check to move on. The next activity involves calculating the molar mass of the reactants and products in the aspirin synthesis. Once you're ready, click next activity. In the next activity, you have three attempts to calculate the molar mass of each substance. Each incorrect attempt would decrease your score by 10 points. Once you're ready, click next. In this activity, you'll be calculating the molar mass or the GFM of three substances. This is the first substance, the second substance, and the third substance. I'm going to do one substance as an example. We did not learn this yet, but this diagram represents a line diagram which is used in organic chemistry to draw a shorthand notation of the structural formula. In the first part of this activity, you must first count the number of carbon atoms. In a line diagram, carbon, even though they're there, are not shown, since line diagram is a shorthand notation. In the line diagram, the carbon atoms are located at the juncture where the bonds meet. Now click and select all the carbon atoms. There is a total of 7 carbon atoms in this molecule. Next, you want to enter the relative atomic mass. If you forgot the atomic mass of carbon, you can click Show Periodic Table to look up the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12. Next, type it in. Once you're done with carbon, click Oxygen and do the same thing. Click all the oxygens in the molecule. There are three oxygens. Next, enter the relative atomic mass of oxygen. Oxygen is 16. Type it in. Once you're done with oxygen, click hydrogen and click all the hydrogens in the molecule. There are six hydrogens in this molecule. Next, enter the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1. Once you're done, click check. In order to move on to the next activity, you also need to calculate the molar mass or the GFM of the other two substances. Once you completed both substances, you can move on to the next activity. In the next activity, we will start measuring the material for the synthesis. If you read the text box, you have a limited attempts to complete the next activity, but each incorrect attempt would decrease your score by 10 points. Once you're ready, click Next. In this activity, you'll be measuring about 5 grams of the reactant. The first thing you want to do is click the Weibo and place it on the scale. Next, you want to click Tear. Next, click the spatula. And you can add the substance onto the Weibo. You want to add about 5 grams of the substance. No, you do not need the exact amount, as long as within 2% error.
Once you have 5 grams of the substance, you can click check. In the next part of the experiment, you have to measure about 18 grams of the other reactant. Place the beaker on the scale, then click tear. If the scale does not reach 0 grams, click tear again. Next, drag the dropper next to the beaker. Just like before, you do not need exact amount as long as within 2% error. Click these top buttons until you add about 18 grams of the reactant. Once you have about 18 grams, click check. Now that we measured the masses of the two reactants, we can now set up the reaction. Once you're ready, click next activity. Keep in mind, if you make a mistake, your score will decrease by 10 points. At this point, we are about halfway done through the virtual lab. I will show you how to set up the chemical reaction. There are two ways to set up the chemical reaction. I will show you both ways. It does not matter which way you do, you'll get full points. For the first method, place the Bunsen burner onto the lab table. Next, you want to drag the small neck round bottom flask into the water bath. If you look inside your round bottom flask, your two reactants are already placed inside. The glass object on top of the round bottom flask is known as a condenser. During the chemical reaction, the substances inside the round bottom flask will boil and vaporize. The purpose of the condenser is to condense the vapors back into liquid, which prevents the substances from leaving the reaction vessel. The glass tube inside the condenser is surrounded by cold water, which helps condense the hot vapors of the substances back into a liquid which flows back down into the round bottom flask. Notice that the condenser is not completely filled with cold water. To fix that, you must have the water flow from bottom to top rather than top to bottom. So click this button to reverse the water flow. Next, you want to change the Bunsen burner flame to blue because blue flame is hotter than yellow flame. Click the plus button. Next, you want to raise the water level so it covers more of the round bottom flask. Click the up button to raise the water level. Notice that the round bottom flask is shaking a lot. To avoid this, add the anti-bumping chips. The purpose of the anti-bumping chips is to make sure it boils more calmly. This setup and lab technique is known as a reflux. If you look closely at the round bottom flask, you will see liquid falling down. During a reflux, the substances in the round bottom flask vaporize, goes to the gas state. Then it is condensed in the condenser going back to liquid, which falls back down in the round bottom flask. This is the completed setup. Once you have the setup complete, you can click check to move on. But before we move on, let me show you another method to set up this reaction. This is the second method of setting up this reaction. Instead of using the Bunsen burner, you'll be using the heating mantle. Drag the heating mantle to the lab station. That is the only thing different, everything else is the same. Same as before, drag the small neck round bottom flask onto the heating mantle. Next, you want to revert the water flow so the condenser is completely filled with cold water. Next, you want to turn on the heating mantle. To prevent shaking of the round bottom flask, add the anti-bumping chips. Now your setup is complete, click check to move on.
In the next activity, we will be analyzing how does the reaction work. Since analyzing organic reaction mechanism is beyond this course, I will go over how to complete this next activity. In this activity, you are given a before and after picture, and the goal is to figure out which of these three are the middle picture. If you analyze this closely, the oxygen on the molecule on the left bonds to the carbon of the molecule on the right. In order to form the bond, the lone pairs on the oxygen will become the covalent bond between the oxygen and the carbon. If you look at the after picture, notice instead of a C double bond O, there's a CO single bond. Therefore, two electrons in the double bond became the oxygen's lone pair. The best picture that illustrates this change will be the first one. Now we have to analyze another reaction mechanism. This time, this is the before picture, and this is the after picture. If you look closely, the hydrogen on the oxygen is no longer there. Instead, you have a lone pair. Therefore, the bond between the OH became the lone pair. The best picture that illustrates this will be the first one. For the last reaction mechanism, this time, this is the before picture, and this is the after picture. If you look closely between the before and after picture, this bond was broken. If you compare the before and after picture, this oxygen initially has three lone pairs, but in the after picture, it has two lone pairs. Instead of having a CO single bond, now the CO double bond. This oxygen initially has two lone pairs, but now has three. So in order to explain what is happening, the lone pair of this oxygen became part of the double bond, and the electrons in this bond between the oxygen and the carbon became part of the lone pair of this oxygen. The best picture that illustrates this change will be the first one. In the next activity, the reaction is complete, and now we're going to precipitate the aspirin product. Keep in mind, if you make a mistake, your score will decrease by 10 points. Currently, the aspirin product is dissolved in solution in this round bottom flask. To precipitate the aspirin, we need to add cold water. The purpose of the cold water is to lower the temperature, since solid substances are less soluble at lower temperatures. We will learn about this next term. Since there's no crystals at the moment, we're going to use the glass rod to scratch the inside of the round bottom flask. This will start the crystallization process. Once you see crystals, click check. In the next activity, we have filtered the crystals and collected them in a watch glass. Now we're going to dry the aspirin to remove any remaining solvent. Keep in mind, if you make a mistake, your score will decrease by 10 points. To dry the aspirin, turn on the oven, click the on button. Leave the oven on until the sample mass is constant. Once the sample mass is constant, turn off the oven. Then click check. In the next part of this virtual lab, you'll be calculating the percent yield of the aspirin. Keep in mind, if you make a mistake, your score will go down by five points. In the first part of this activity, you'll be figuring out the amount of moles of the first reactant. To do that, you need to know the relationship between moles, mass, and molar mass. If you don't know the relationship, check the equation on table T. You can drag these boxes into the equation. Once you're done, click check. In the second part of the activity, you'll be calculating the amount of moles for the second reactant. 
Again, you'll be dragging boxes into the equation to figure out the relationship between mass, moles, and molar mass. Once you're done, click check. In the third part of this activity, you have to figure out the limiting reagent of this reaction. To do that, analyze the mole ratio in the reaction, then look at the moles of each reactant to determine the limiting reagent. Once you determine it, click the correct compound and click check. In the fourth part of this activity, you have to figure out the theoretical yield of aspirin. To do that, you need to know the relationship between mass, moles, and molar mass to complete the equation. To complete the equation, drag these boxes into the equation. Once you're done, click check. For the last part in this activity, you have to determine the equation for the percent yield of aspirin. So drag these boxes into the equation, and then once you're done, click check. Now we are about done with this virtual lab. Click Next. Now you can provide feedback on how well you did. At this point, your virtual lab book is complete and you can download it. To download the virtual lab book, click this button on the bottom, then click Download PDF of the lab book. The PDF you would submit through Google Classroom. If you click End Activity, you can start over if you wish, or you can go back to the home page by clicking Aspirin Home. At the home page, you can download the lab book if you wish. This concludes the video. If any question, feel free to contact me.